I'm Dean. I'm the dad. I'm Laura. I'm the mom. And I'm Crystal, and I'm the daughter. And together we are Family, Family Plot. Plot. That was nice. That was very nice. So how is everybody on the final Wednesday before Halloween? Oh, uh, what about you, Dad? I want to go back. Dad's pretty good, you know. Uh, I'm slowly dying, but, yeah, you know, just the same way everybody else is over time. Like, eventually I'll die when I'm 103. Oh, my goodness. That's how slowly I'm dying. I see. Well, this week hasn't been a great week, to be honest with you. I'm sorry. But we have our things we have to do, and I have to do a pace, a, a mile today, tomorrow, so... Well, that's okay. Fun. You're you're gonna do your best, and that's what's important. Uh, he'll tell me not to rock since I got, got that scratch on uh, Monday. Monday, I think that's look, Saturday. Sunday. Sunday. It was Sunday. Yes, it was Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> you know, like the old style. Yes, everybody. Everybody still knows the Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Actually, I don't. Okay, back in the day, they would do monster truck shows, which was a dumb idea. But for some reason, people in the 80s loved them, probably because of a lack of the Internet. Definitely because of a lack of the Internet. And so it was the place you had to go if you wanted to watch people do something really dumb. And so... It's a really dumb thing. And so, usually, they would get some sap announcer to... This Sunday, 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 come and see excitement as the world of trucks slam into each other. Ah, it's going to be awesome. Stupid. And it was, yeah. Anyway, so. Really what it's called. Stupid. Something like that. Well, there are people who enjoy it, and that's, that's all. That's, some people really enjoy seeing trucks smash each other up. So that kind of, but yeah, that kind of thing that. Well, now they just have videos of it on YouTube, so yeah. you don't have to annoy others with what you love. That's right. Just once again, I want to say to our listeners, hey, we have a Patreon. Go there, you know, sign up, five bucks, what a dollar, whatever you can afford. It's broken up into Team Bunny and Team Podcast. So, you know, if you can help out the show even a little bit, it goes a long way. It, hey. it gets us... You know, I just feel like I need to be brought into this. Maybe there should be something for Team Mom, too. Yeah! I mean, there's a Team Podcast for Dad, and there's Team Bunny for Crystal and Noel, but what about me? Yeah, Where what about Mom? Into this? I, oh, Mom? I assumed you were on... Patreon party. <laughs> I assumed you were on Team Podcast. Why would I be on Team Podcast? I uh, think she'd rather be on Team Bunny. She's thank part you. of the podcast. Okay, but see, no, <laughs> see, this this is what I'm saying. I can't choose sides. I'm the mom. <laughs> yeah, she needs her own. I, I'm I'm like I'm okay. like Sweden. Okay, uh, so Switzerland. I've got to be. I've got to remain neutral and stuff. Okay, so as soon as I can, I will add Team Spa Day. Ooh, a spa day! <laughs> <laughs> she needs one of those. Wait, you mean that's a thing? It can be. <laughs> I was going to say Team Purple. Y'all! <laughs> Mommy could use some Team Spa Day now. <laughs> Or they 
could just simply make a one-time donation through Buy Me a Coffee. Yes. Or you could just share the show with your friends on social media. That's even That's better. Even better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, are we ready to begin? Yes. On October 31st, most of us can observe an ancient ritual that is designed to confuse evil spirits. The wearing of costumes and the offerings of candy are meant to placate and confuse spirits who could only attack our world on this one night. Another way people celebrated was to tell ghost stories, gathered around the fire in fellowship, which made the night's terrors seem far away. Tonight, we revisit this tradition by telling our own stories, some true, some not. Which is which? That's for you to decide. Jerry Ghost Channel is in their other podcasters. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> well, look, when it comes to saying things in a spooky manner on a podcast, the absolute champ is Forrest Burgess. So, yes. 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 So, I have tried to channel my inner Forrest for Halloween. And I think I did okay a couple of times. Not nearly as good as the original, but I think I did okay. Well, of course not. We, we'll just go back to having blurbs that aren't so... Foresty. Foresty. Yeah, that's a good word. <laughs> Next week. But, for now, that brings us to our first batch of sp spooky stories. And while we, we apologize for not having Krista's weird facts this week... No. We replace it with... Krista's Spooky Stories! Alright, so, welcome to Krista's Spooky Stories number one. We're probably going to be doing this for a while, so I'm saying number one. Okay. <laughs> spooky Story number one, what you got for us? Alright. Hold on. So. Buttons on your underwear? No. Oh. <laughs> Today, actually, before I get into this, me and my class talked about fairies. Ooh, we've talked about fairies on this show before. But they were about Halloween fairies. I see. And how they associate with them. I see the. I think. Also, thank you, Miss Vernicus, Miss V, as we would like to call it. She's an it. Miss is, G. Is she the one that listens? Talking about her name. Is she the one that listens to our show? Yes, yes, she is. Hi, Miss V. Miss <laughs> V, we're she glad was, you listened to she our was show. She was laughing about our last last episode and about how you said you remember you said something about my um. The way I was speaking in, she was just, you were just like, don't talk like that. Your parent, your, your teacher is going to be upset with us. <laughs> <laughs> she was dying laughing because of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway. Well, Miss V, welcome to the, to the family. Yes. Welcome, welcome to, to the, the family, family plot, family. as we like to call it. Absolutely. All right, you got show. You got stories for us, though. Yeah, yes, ma'am. So this first one is the Axe Murder House. Okay. Um, and this is by Esquire dot com. Esquire dot com. Okay. By Matt M Matt Miller and Lauren Prince. The Axe Murder House. The Vasilla. 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 The Silla Axe Murder House in the Silla, Iowa, is known as the well-known tourist attraction for ghost hunters and horror, horror lovers of life. Uh -huh. The site of a gruesome, unsolved 1912 murder in which six 12 children and two adults had had their skulls completely crashed by by the act of an unknown perpet perpetrator. Perpetrator? Yes. And was purchased in 1994. 
restored its 1912 condition, and converted into a tourist destination. It cost $428 a night to stay at the old haunted home, where visitors always reported strange paranormal experiences, such as visions of a man with an axe roaming down the hall, roaming the halls, or faint screams of children. Wow, that is definitely <laughs> But we're not done. Oh, cool. Uh, but in no November of the 2014, the haunting took a darker turn. Rob Robert Stephen Lawrence Lawrence Jr., 37 of Rhinelander Lander. Wisconsin I was a on a regular recreational recreational uh-huh. recreational paranormal visit with his friends when the when true horror struck her bite. Okay. The Montgomery County Sheriff's Office said Lawrenson suffered a self inflicted injury about at about twelve forty five AM. Which is around the same time you know, the 1912 murderers, axe murderers in the house began. Lawrence uh, Lawson recovered from his injury, injuries, but has never spoken publicly about what occurred from that day. For Mar- Martha Lynn, the owner of the, uh, the home, the incident was very upsetting. It's pub- publicity. Publicity, but it's not exactly the kind of publicity you would desire to have. I don't want people thinking that when they come to the Bullseye Axe Murder House, something's going to happen that's going to make them do something like that. The house remains open for tourist visits, horse visits, and overnight stays today. Wow. <laughs> Velisca is one of those things that we're going to have to talk about uh, one of these days, but because it, really there is something there, obviously. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it, well, it just it's a historical thing, and it actually might have been a part of a larger series of slayings. Uh, I'm it, sure that was just an overview of what happened. I'm sure right. There's more to it. Right. Uh, well, it again, a lot of the podcasts that I listen to have covered it. And so it's one of those things that I feel like we have to cover at some point. But I kind of want to be able to, to do a different take on it than they have. And since, you know, it's something my heroes have done, I don't want to ste- try to steal thunder that they can shake better than I can. You know, they're, they're right. Zeus. I'm a, I'm a kindergarten kid with a window shade, so. Right. All right. So this next one is called The Haunted Doll. This one is longer than the last one, so you're uh-huh. just going to have to stick to in this one. Sure. Um, I'm with you. Let's go. Or let it go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. No. <laughs> Haunted doll. When you think of haunted dolls, it's likely the whole old Victorian looking porcelain kind that springs to mind. None of which you probably have still laying around. Still, don't get too comfortable around good toys too soon. Though a Disney's Frozen Elsa doll that was gifted for Christmas in 2019. 2013, sorry, in the Houston area made headlines earlier this year when it seemingly became haunted. Her KPRC2 Houston news. The doll recited phrases from the let it go from the movie Frozen and sang let it go when a button was pressed on its necklace. Okay. For two years, it did the, that in English. My mother, Elmi, El, El, Emily Madonna, said, 
in 2015, it started doing it alternatingly between 